Hey, it's Matt Haynes, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to make your own lens flares and film light leak effects, and it's absolutely free, and it's really simple to do as well. So, did you see what happened right there? Or, how about that one? So when I first got into photography, I kind of came at it a different route than most people do. I uh, actually w started buying vintage cameras, vintage film cameras off of eBay and uh, there was a lot of things wrong with some of those cameras. And in fact, um, there were light leaks and there were all sorts of problems. And I loved that. I loved the randomness, the, the chaos, the, the, the grungy lo-fi quality that you would get uh, on some of those images. So when I got into cinematography, I wanted to bring some of that, that chaos, that randomness, that grungy quality to, to my videos. And so I looked around online and sure, there's there's plugins that you can buy and they cost money though, right? And I thought, you know what? I could probably do this on my own and come up with something that A, is free and B, is something that I created personally. So what I'm doing with this tutorial is I'm gonna share with you how to do that for free. And it, the equipment, the amount of equipment you need is very minimal. You need, we need a flashlight right? You need a phone and optional, you need like plastic wrap, like the kind you would wrap uh, food with in the, in the kitchen, just crinkled up and, and all that. And the final thing you need is editing software to do the effect, of course. And uh, it has to be software that can composite two clips together. And you have to be able to choose like a lighten mode or a lighter color mode or something like that. So if you're using DaVinci Resolve, if you're using uh, Final Cut Pro, if you're using Adobe Premiere, you're all set. As for if you're using an app on the phone, I don't know, some of them do, some of them don't. Um, your mileage may vary. So you're gonna, be, you're gonna be shooting light right into the lens of your phone. And that sounds simple, but if you do it right, you can get these really cool effects. And when you layer it in the right way in editing software, uh, you get this, get the effect. You get lens flares, and with a little bit of uh, color manipulation, you can make it look like a film leak as well. So be aware that some flashlights have a flickering output, especially LED flashlights. This one's an LED one. This one is an old analog one. And uh, I found out actually as I was making the uh, B-roll for, uh, for this tutorial that uh, the LED flashlight flickers. And I'll show you that effect later on, but it, it, it pretty much ruins, uh, ruins the effect. So as I mentioned, this works in Final Cut Pro, this works in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm assuming it works in Adobe Premiere. I don't use Adobe Premiere, so you know, you'll have to figure that out yourself. But uh, later on in the tutorial, I'll show you how to do it in DaVinci and, uh, and, and in the Final Cut as well. So if you're using Adobe Premiere, you'll be able to figure it out. Now, your first step is to take your case off your phone. Uh, I recommend it just because, you know, you're trying to shoot the light in at an angle on your lens, not directly into the camera. So if you have a really thick case, the, you may not be able to get those little edge effects that we're looking for. Uh, but try not to uh, try not to drop your phone as you take your case off. All right, so two things when you're sending your phone up. You want to focus your phone so that the objects close up are going to be blurry. And that's because your flashlight is going to be close to your phone and you don't want it to look like a flashlight. So you want it to be a little blurry. And you also want the background or, or whenever the light is not shining on the lens to be black because you need that black and white effect to do the composite later. So I find the easiest way is just to point your phone out the window and focus, you know, do the auto exposure, auto focus lock on something distant and bright. And that way your phone is focused, you know, focused on the distance and you've got the exposure locked. And so when you go into a dark room, which you're gonna do, you will have, um, you'll have that nice black background. And just remember not to turn your phone off after you've locked your exposure and focus because it's gonna reset and then you're gonna to have to redo it. Now, at least on the iPhone, you can adjust the exposure once you've locked it as well. You can just drag down on that little slider. So if your background isn't completely dark, when you get into a dark or dim room, you can, you can make some final adjustments there. 
And you don't need a completely dark room. It doesn't need to be uh, pitch black. It just needs to look dark on your phone screen. Now, when I first tried this effect back on the iPhone 7, I was able to get these nice effects with kind of lens aberrations and, and things like that without any extra special equipment. But score one for Apple, they've really improved their lenses between the seven and now. And so it's actually harder to get these, these effects. So to solve that problem, that's where that clear plastic wrap comes in. If you're not, if you're not getting the cool sort of randomness that you want, grab a little plastic wrap, crumple it up, put it over your lens, and then you'll get you'll introduce that randomness and you'll get some something more interesting. So try it both ways. And so you'll see something like this on your phone screen. So remember what I said about that uh, flickering flashlight? The flicker of the flashlight interacts with the frame rate on your phone's camera and you end up get, getting this banding effect on the, uh, on the video that you're making here. So could you fix this by adjusting the frame rate on your camera? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, I didn't try it. It was just easier to grab a different flashlight. If you happen to try adjusting your frame rate on your phone and it fixes it and you have one of these flickering LED flashlights, let me know in the comments, would ya? Because I'd be interested to know. As you move the flashlight around, focus on the near misses with the light. You're not just aiming it directly into the lens. You're trying to have it sort of skate across the lens and get these, these sort of blurry clouds and artifacts rather than it just be full on flashlight because that doesn't help you. I find that it works best when I'm angling the flashlight almost 90 degrees uh, from the phone like this rather than directly like this. So record for maybe two minutes and then hit stop and then tap edit on your phone so that you can make some adjustments to the clip you just recorded. So scroll through the clip you just made until you have a frame that has some really bright parts and some really dark parts so you can see the amount of contrast that you have. From there, you can do one of two things. You can e either just grab a filter that, do that converts to a basic black and white or you can uh, drag the saturation all the way down to zero. The end result should be a black and white clip. Now, select the contrast control and crank it all the way up, maximum. At least on iPhone, that, that's what looks best. If you're using an Android, uh, I have no idea how to look, but uh, we want a lot of contrast. We don't want the blacks to be dark gray. We want them to be solid black. And you may find you wanna bring the brightness up as well. So now you need to find a clip that you want to use this uh, special effect in. And I find that it works best a couple of different ways. You can either use it on a short clip just to add some uh, variety, or you can use it, think of it like, a, like if you're thinking musically, think of it as a drum roll. It works best at the end of a clip to transition you into a new clip. Just like a drum roll would uh, move you into the next part of a song. It also works nicely for like if you have a, a short clip in, in a B-roll, uh, you can take, you know, you can use the whole clip and it just gives it that feeling of like you've introduced some um, vintage, uh, vintage film or something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do the edit now and I'll show you in uh, Final Cut Pro in just a moment, but I'm gonna show you DaVinci Resolve first. And for this example, I have this time-lapse clip that I want to then lead into a kind of title interlude where I've got a handwritten title there. And so I'm gonna use this at the end of the time-lapse as sort of that drum roll uh, transition to bring it into the, the next clip. Once I've imported the flare clip, I scroll through the clip until I find a particular part I like, and I set the in and out points for the clip I want to use and then drag it onto an empty video track. For the effect to work, this clip must be on a track that is on top of the main video track. If I play this back as is, all I see is the black and white flare clip, but we're gonna fix that. So in the inspector window, click the video tab if it's not already visible and locate the composite section. Click the composite mode pop-up menu that is currently set to normal, that's how it defaults, and change it to screen. 
All right, so as I play back through this section, you can already see that the effect is, is in place. However, it's probably a little extreme. So find a spot where the flare effect is at its most noticeable or brightest and use that as a reference point and adjust the opacity slider in the composite effect section. If you wanna give your effect more of a film light leak effect or just wanna give the effect a little flare, see what I did there? You can just give the effect a color grade. Film leaks tend to be orange or red, although sometimes you see like a blue cyan uh, coloring to them as well. So we're still working in DaVinci Resolve. Go to the color pane, and if the flare clip is not selected, go ahead and select it. Locate the color wheels and find the gain color wheel, because this is essentially the highlights one, and grab the center of the wheel and grab it to the orange-red section or direction and it will color grade your flare clip um, orange. And so immediately you have more of a light leak effect because of the color change. Now go back to the edit pane and uh, I always find once I do that, the effect seems too much again. So now I'm gonna adjust the opacity to where it feels right. And usually what I'll do is I'll bring the opacity down to zero and then just gradually bring it up to where I start to notice it. And for me, that's all it needs because it's very easy to overdo this effect. So I think it's better to start from zero and work upward rather than start from 100 and work downward. All right, so here you can see that I'm using a cyan tint instead. Even though there's a lot of blue and cyan in this clip already and then making the flare clip cyan as well, I think it just makes it sit better than having it just be white. But that's just my opinion. You can make it purple, green, whatever. Uh, you can make it as extreme as you want. That's the nice thing. You have control over everything. Okay, let's take a look at this transition in Final Cut Pro. And I've identified another clip that I wanna use a flare or film light leak effect on. So first of all, I import my clip into my, my edit like, like I would normally, and I find a nice piece of the flare clip that I think is gonna work well. And I set my in and out points for that clip. And then I drag the clip to the timeline. So just like we did in DaVinci Resolve, you need to have this clip sitting on top of the, the main clip. So it needs to be on a different video track and it needs to be above the main one. You might notice that the black and white clip here actually has kind of a warm tint. Well, I already have a, an adjustment layer that's uh, color grading everything here and I didn't want to remove it. So just understand that that's why it's um, sort of a beigey white rather than a pure white. All right, so same thing as before, locate the composite and there's gonna be a pop-up uh, menu and select screen. As I mentioned before, lighten or screen seems to work best in Final Cut Pro, but experiment and maybe you'll find something wacky or crazy that you like better. Now, as you can see, the effect at 100% is just way over the top. And so we're, I'm gonna find the a really bright part of it and I'm gonna adjust the opacity and dial it down quite a bit, just like I did before. To color grade this effect, you just click the color doohickey icon, whatever it's called, and um, choose color wheels. So you're gonna add a color wheels um, grade to this, and this will add a color wheel correction to the clip. As we did before, you're gonna select the highlights color wheel and drag it towards orange or drag it towards cyan. I'm gonna try orange first, and then I'll try cyan to see how they look different. So far I've been showing you this effect being used on transitions from one clip to another, but it's actually, it's useful for hiding mistakes and flaws because it, it just kind of distracts the viewer from, from a mistake. I did this travel video about a lighthouse and I was really happy with all the shots I got, but I realized when I got back that I had forgotten to get just a regular plain, uh, shot of the lighthouse by itself because I needed I needed something for a title. So to solve this problem, I just uh, went on the internet, found a Creative Commons photo I could use in the production, and I put this uh, I put this lens flare effect over the top of it, and that and a little zoom, and I think it really um, hides the fact that this is just a still photo. So in this next clip, uh, I was recording a really emotional moment when. As a family, we were dropping my oldest son off at college. And it's not like we could do multiple takes of this. It was raw, it was right there. 
And it was the moment where he was walking away. Like we'd spent the day walking around the college with him and kind of getting him settled. And it was the moment where he was walking away to his dorms and we had to stand there and watch him go. And it was really emotional. And wouldn't you know it, my camera decides to lose focus right at that time. But I had to, I had to use the piece. It really, it was, it was the, it was the climax of the whole video. So what I did is I used this, uh, this lens flare effect just to hide the fact that it was out of focus. And of course, as the viewer, you can still tell it's out of focus. But when you also add that lens flare element, it gives it a sense of uh, lo-fi grunginess, and it feels like it was intentional whereas the out of focus part was definitely not intentional. All right, there's one more place I like to use this effect and that's right here. This is the part where I ask you to subscribe and could you please like this video? I mean, you you made it this far, right? You learned something. And, and also, since you just saw a clip of that video where I dropped off my son, you might wanna take a look at the whole thing. It's right up there, so click that. Hey, thanks for watching.